hello i bought three geo bin brand compost bins that's these things here they're three foot tall and they can get about four feet wide and they're adjustable and uh, what i like about them is they're lightweight and you can fold them up and store them away when you're not using them i'm going to work on getting these set up and filled with materials i left these geo bins sitting out overnight so that they would uh, straighten up a bit got those put together it's about as easy as it gets each one of these came with five of these little locks. They just pop right in there. A little easier to do two-handed, but um, the instructions recommended a little bit of overlap here, but I've got the uh, inner fold with all the keys on it so that that part is pressed up close to this as much as possible. This outside piece has a little bit of a flap here, so what I'll do is just rotate this to where it faces a direction that I'm not going to see as much just because it is a little unsightly. You can adjust this to the diameter that you want, but I've got it on the maximum setting, which is four foot. This is a four foot measuring stick. And uh, you can see. Four foot all the way around. I've got these at the end of my garden and uh, I've got a lot of wood chips. This is a thick layer of wood chips. And I'm not sure that I want to have the compost sitting on top of that. I think what I'm going to do is rake all that out of the way so that the compost is sitting on the bare soil. I think that'll be easier when it comes time to turn this. I don't really want these big thick wood chips mixing in with the compost. I've got that all raked away. Clearing the wood chips revealed a few things. One, I've got this old mesquite stump here. Cactus. And a harvester red ant bed. What's that saying? Compost your enemies? I think that applies here. I'm gonna continue to experiment with compost and cactus pads. These pads right here I collected yesterday. I made one major cut on most of these. Some of them have a few cuts, but um, this was a lot easier than having to chop them up into a whole lot of little pieces. So I'm going to see if this will break down just as well as if I had cut them down into smaller chunks. I'm also going to collect a wheelbarrow full of whole cactus pads, maybe with one puncture or something, just from picking them up with this, these loppers here. Um, and I'm going to see if those whole pads will break down. If the whole pads break down in the compost, then there's no need to chop these up at all. I don't think they will break down, but um, it's worth trying out. I got the wheelbarrow all full of the whole cactus pads. For these larger pads, I made a few cuts on them. Most of the pads were about this size and I made one major cut. That'll give the decomposers an entry point so that they can work on consuming those cactus. Some of these cactus are really spiny. Look at that mean guy. So other than cactus, there's my whole pads, there's my cut up pads. I've got donkey manure that I picked up a couple weekends ago. It's right at 120 degrees Fahrenheit right now. I'm going to use that. I've got 13 and a half bags full of leaves from a relative that they raked up from their yards. Here I've got five Starbucks uh, bags of ground coffee. That's probably about 50 pounds worth. Here I've got a bucket full of compost from my other compost pile. It consists of sifted wood chips, donkey manure, um, cactus pads, chicken manure. Then I've got two buckets full of chicken manure that I cleaned out from my coop this morning. I'm going to take all these materials here and I'm going to dump them in my wheelbarrow there and mix them up. And then each of the three compost bins that the wind blew over um, will get an equal share of those. Got all that mixed together. It's almost a full wheelbarrow. Let that look like some good stuff there. Chicken manure, coffee grounds compost. The wind was getting pretty bad so I had to put in these little U-posts here. Just slightly tapped them in just to help these things stay standing up. 
I wish it wasn't so windy because that's going to make this a lot more challenging. Once I get those bags of leaves open, I think they're going to start wanting to blow all over the place. I think what I'll try is putting the leaves in this tub of water, getting them good and soaked, and then scooping those out and dumping them in the compost bins. Uh, maybe that'll help them stay put. Here's what I'm doing. I'm taking soaked leaves, dropping them in there. I'll get a layer of that. Then I'll go scoop off some of the donkey manure, do a layer of that, and I'll take a shovel full or two of the uh, mix of chicken manure, compost, and, uh, and coffee grounds, and I'll do a light layer of that, then I'll wet it all in, and then I'll just repeat until this is full. Now this particular bin, it's the rightmost bin, I'm going to leave out cactus out of this one. Those other two bins will have the, uh, the cactus pads. For the cactus layer, I'm just trying to get them flat and to where they're not touching each other or the sides so much. I want these to break down as quickly as possible. I've got all those filled up. The cactus layer probably stopped right around here on both of these. I didn't put any in that top, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 inches or so. I'm going to monitor the temperature of these piles daily and I'll put the uh, temps in the description. Each one of these should be holding about 36 cubic feet or that's 108 total if you add all these up. Divide that by 27, and, which is a cubic yard, and you get four cubic yards total. So that's a lot of compost. If compost is a black gold, come springtime, I should be a rich man. Thanks for watching.